before we get into this video, I just want you to think about who will be the first company to make a product with these ingredients containing precision fermentation dairy milk powder, which we can already make today, a palm oil replacement, which we're going to get into in this video, a sugar replacement, perhaps with something like sweet proteins. What will that do to this product and how much healthier will it be? Something to think about. At C16, we are producing sustainable alternatives to palm oil. Palm oil is the world's most commonly used vegetable oil. It's in 50% of consumer goods, but its production is driven primarily by deforestation, mostly in Indonesia and Malaysia. It's in you know, all sorts of personal care and food products that we consume every single day, but few people realize the negative externalities that are associated with the way that it's currently made. It comes from a tree. It comes from a tree that's native to West Africa, but has been supplanted in Southeast Asia as demand for the oil has increased. And the land that that tree can grow on, the oil palm tree, is within 10 degrees of the equator, where there are currently primarily tropical rainforests. And so what's been happening over the past few decades is those rainforests have been slashed and burned to the ground and replaced by oil palm plantations. Now at C16, we've come to realize that agriculture is not providing a sustainable, viable alternative to palm oil. And that's primarily because there's not a good chemical replacement for palm oil. It's super unique. It's got this balance of saturated and unsaturated fats, which you don't find in other vegetable oils. It's also really cheap. And the crop that makes it, the oil palm crop that makes it, is the most productive oil palm crop in the world. And so we've come to learn at C16 that agriculture is not a viable alternative. We've developed a precision fermentation process where we can use yeast to make a palm oil alternative and not have to rely on deforestation to make that kind of product. We began to explore what kinds of microbes can actually produce oils, what kinds of cells um, are really efficient at converting carbon sources into different products of interest. We're looking for a strain that can produce an oil that very closely resembles the chemical and physical composition of palm oil. And then we take that strain and we put it into shake flasks or bioreactors to begin to test how well that cell grows, how well that strain grows under specific nutrient conditions and specific biophysical conditions that we've provided for it. And that's our fermentation process. Everything is really, really well controlled for the cells to be as happy as possible. They have all the oxygen they need, all the nutrients are mixed properly, they're at the right pH, so they're super, super happy to be growing really efficiently. And also really importantly, these two liter bioreactors are perfect, perfect models of the 50,000 liter commercial scale systems that we use during our commercial scale product development. All right, so all of the learnings that we get from these reactors, we can take to that 50,000 liter scale and higher. And that's how we've been able to, to get to that, exactly to mass production. And from there, we can take those oils and bring them to our, our uh, product development teams. There's a lot of amazing work that's gone into the fermentation and the microbiology space well before we ever came up with the idea to produce a palm oil alternative. And so we had a lot of information to work off of and learn from. And so within the first year, when we finally um, grew a culture that was successful, it was, it was a revelation that really excited, passionate people getting together and at the right time can solve problems and can troubleshoot biology in ways that can be really impactful. You guys missed that this company has a dank meme stash. While we start off at a bit of a premium compared to palm oil, we have the benefit of what's called economies of scale, right? With biomanufacturing, we can develop our product in these large stainless steel tanks that continue to scale vertically, as opposed to in the current industry with production of conflict palm oil needing to expand horizontally, degrading more tropical rainforests, emitting more CO2 just to make, you know, proportionally more oil. For us, we have the ability to scale up in larger larger tanks, continuing to drive down that cost curve. With Palmless, we actually developed um, our own product. It's called Save the Effing Rainforest, and it's a nourishing oil for your body, for your hair, and for your skin. Um, it contains Terula oil. Terula oil is our microbial oil. That's our, that's our innovation. Palmless is the, the brand that shows people that microbial oils are real, they are safe, they function, there is no longer an excuse for brands to be using palm oil that's laced with uh, deforestation, right? Microbial oils provide alternatives that are viable today. With Palmas, we're showing the world that we are at that stage. Now, companies like C16 Biosciences, there's also this company that was vested in by agronomics. 
there are a number of companies working on this problem. And if we look at the cost curves that Tony Siba has been predicting, it seems like we're moving in that direction, right? So for example, in this case, C16 Biosciences started with a consumer product. They're starting with a beauty product because generally they can recoup those costs faster. And as we can see in this latest announcement, they're now getting some more funding and they're starting to move into food. It's not going to be long. Question is, which of the companies are going to make the move the fastest? Will Ferrero, makers of Nutella, be one of them? Or is someone else going to come and make a better product first? Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.